Dateline, Roman Italy, 217 BC. Scandal, as newly elected Roman consul skips sacred rites. In the face of relentless pressure from Carthaginian general Hannibal, incoming consul Gaius Flaminius Nepos has slipped out of Rome to lead his army without performing the all-important but lengthy religious rites expected of a new consul, angering the Senate and possibly the gods themselves. Only the most extraordinary threat to Rome itself could necessitate such a rash act, and after his miraculous conquest of the Alps and his victory over a Roman army at the river Ticinus, Hannibal has become very threatening indeed. We last covered Hannibal's march into Italy after he crossed the Rhone River and began his ascent of the fearsome Alps mountain range. He has since made a successful descent into the Po Valley of Italy, but not without some trouble. Let's go to Hang for more. I'm currently 4,000 feet below the Carthaginian army as it descends the Alps towards the Po Valley in Italy. It is so cold up there that the snows from last winter still haven't melted, so the footing is treacherous at best. Especially with 37 war elephants in tow. Oh, it seems, yes, it seems something has fallen off the pass towards us. It could be a part of the massive baggage train needed to supply the 50,000 soldiers or one of the elite Numidian cavalry that dominate any flat ground. I really hope it isn't one of the- Oh God. Oh dear. Is, is he, is he okay? Anyone? <clears throat> okay, thanks, uh, thanks Hank. I'm sure he'll be fine. Keeping his army from falling to their deaths from the mountain was the only trouble Hannibal had, however, as he formed up in northern Italy. After a lightning victory over the surprised Roman legions at the Battle of Ticinus, thousands of Gallic warriors who also hated Rome as much as Hannibal flocked to his banner, bolstering his army to unheard of numbers. Rome suffered another brutal defeat at the Battle of Trebia by playing right into a Carthaginian trap. Consul Sempronius Longus, leader of the Roman army, was impetuous and rushed into battle in order to defeat Hannibal as quickly as possible. In doing so and being harassed by Hannibal's light cavalry, he ordered his soldiers to skip breakfast and wait across the freezing deep Trebia River where Hannibal's main army was waiting. Too cold after the crossing to throw their javelins, Rome's light infantry retreated, while Hannibal's elite cavalry and frightening elephants made short work of the Roman cavalry, leaving only the Roman heavy infantry, that is the Hestati, the Principes, and the Triarii, to engage by themselves. What the Romans didn't realize was Mago, Hannibal's younger brother, with 2,000 men, waited in ambush in a concealed position near the river, and when the Romans had passed their position, they fell on the rear of the hard-pressed Roman infantry. The result was a massacre, and one of the largest military defeats Rome had ever suffered. Such was the emergency that prompted incoming consul Gaius Flaminius Nepos to risk angering the gods by rushing off to war without performing the rites. It has sadly fallen to us at Headline Histories to report that the fears of the Roman people were well founded, and it seems the gods have indeed abandoned Flaminius at Lake Trasimene in Italian Etruria. Hannibal once again displayed his brilliance by marching his army around Flaminius's left flank and effectively cut him off from Rome. This prompted the eager new council to blindly pursue Hannibal to Trasimene, where the Carthaginian army lay in ambush. Yet again, the ambush was a complete success. In the Battle of Lake Trasimene, Hannibal destroyed most of the trapped Roman army and killed Flaminius with little loss to his own army. Remember, always perform your sacred rites to the gods, kids. I'm receiving word now that Hannibal has reached the Eternal City itself, and his attack on the city is imminent. We go now live to our Roman reporter, who awaits the army outside the city walls. Thanks, Yank. I'm standing here outside the fortified walls of Rome, waiting with great anticipation for Hannibal and his army to begin its siege. The tension inside the city is palpable, especially after the Senate's recent vote to enact their emergency powers to impose martial law and elect a dictator. I have even been given this helmet for my own protection. There is now nothing but a bit of stone opposing Hannibal's inevitable conquest of the city and the realization of his revenge against Rome. Hang on, bear with me please. What? Are you serious? All right, well, dear viewers, I've just been told that Hannibal has just marched past the city towards southern Italy and has no intention of taking it yet. I have to say that in this reporter's opinion, such a decision is madness and is sure to end badly for Hannibal. Well, more updates as and when we get them. Back to you, Yank. Thanks, Sextus. All of us here in the studio are flabbergasted by Hannibal's decision to pass up this opportunity to do what he came to Italy to do, destroy Rome. He must have his reasons, though, and until we know them, we can only speculate. Is he afraid of a lengthy siege of the city? 
Does he march south to separate Rome from her allies? More information as and when we know it. Thanks for watching.